Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, from today onwards, we are starting a very new series and this series is on environmental studies. Friends, this is an introductory lecture on environmental studies and uh, we are going to talk on uh, concepts and uh, approaches first. Friends, for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios, Professor R.B. Singh. Professor R.B. Singh is a renowned professor of uh, geography and he is teaching uh, in Department of Geography, Delhi School of uh, Economics, University of Delhi. Professor R.B. Singh is a prolific professor and uh, uh, he always benefits students with the dint of his knowledge and wisdom and you students always take advantages from his experiences too. Friends, we know that you might have lots of questions and lots of questions will be generated once you start learning today's lecture in detail. Friends, in between if you feel so that you have certain questions to be asked, then do call us through our toll free number. Our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. I repeat our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. You are just requesting requested to note down your questions and ask them at the end of the lecture that is at the uh, last 10 minutes of the lecture so that first you understand today's topic in detail and yes of course we will try to give answers to your questions in the last 10 minutes. Now I would like to welcome our guest Professor R.B. Singh once again. Hello sir, welcome to the lecture. Thank you Gitika ji. <coughs> welcome viewers. Today we are going to <coughs> discuss environmental studies. Actually this series is being started today and in first lecture I would like to introduce this topic particularly bringing out concept and approaches. I would like to give background of this program or this course. Environment has become a very important issue of present day particularly I would like to go back to 1972 when UN conference on human environment was organized at a Stockholm and we realize that we are achieving growth, we are also achieving equity, but we have enormous impact on environment few years back Supreme Court asked University Grant Commission also to in ask all university to introduce a compulsory course on environmental studies and most of our universities are having such courses. Environment and ecology. These are the two very important terms. First, I would like to discuss environment denotes surrounding. Surroundings related to society, to nature, to human dimension. But ecology is a branch of science which studies the environment and ecosystem. So, ecology is a branch of science, but environment denotes the surroundings. Ecological studies deal with the significant characteristics of a space and place where we are, where we have different type of environment, typology of environment hierarchy of environment, there are many such issues related to environmental studies. Ecology in the broader context depicting the con complex relationship between biophysical and human environment or you can say human being and society. And if I am telling society it includes biophysical environment and human environment. This identifies and analyze synergy between global, national, regional and local patterns of ecological objects and events that shape our 
lives and livelihoods. Why this is significant? Because the environment covers all entity natural or man made or human external or internal and their interrelationship integration interaction which provide value to humankind not only now but perhaps in the future too environment includes natural resources which is an integral part of our life support system so environment is a basis of our survival here i would like to bring before you the very important concept of environment environment is a public consumption good we get to air water flora fauna all these are the part of environment on which we are surviving we are totally depending on that environment provides raw material for our productive system suppose we have agriculture we have industry we have a processing unit where we get uh, raw materials we get raw materials from environment so it is not only a public consumption good but it also provides raw material for productive system and third important point here i would like to bring before you if we do not need anything what we do we throw in the environment so environment is also receptor of the waste it is a public consumption go it provides our basic needs food fuel fodder shelter these all requirement from the environment raw materials for our productive system and if we do not need anything we also throw into the environment i would like to discuss the components of environment and first i would like to bring before you biosphere biological system of the earth surface all different type of flora and fauna including human being microorganisms sociosphere the social system institutions settlements where people live and technosphere technological system transport system communication system different type of the technology technology is a very important it enhances area of our freedom nature used to bring constraints upon us like i would like to give you example we can go to the moon but at present we can't plant rice on the moon so why because nature used to provide the constraints but we have technology technology enhances our areas of freedom so environment is being de degraded degraded at fast pace due to various human activity or anthropogenic activity understanding the environment here i would like to bring before you three key words natural material and social aspects of the so surrounding 
when we call natural all natural in elements like a water air social aspects even including the policy material aspects our productive system in other words environment represent what i discuss biosphere sociosphere and technosphere and so we need environmental monitoring what do you mean by monitoring improving our understanding it means the change understanding the change control and how we can enhance the environmental quality environmental quality is another very important term and we have to protect and considering the present day pollution related issues and how our environmental quality of delhi is being degraded due to the various channels of human activity what is the environmental quality is a state of environmental condition biophysically psychologically and the also the cult culturally so biophysical cultural and the psychologically i would like to elaborate little bit components of environment environmental studies generally recognize four spheres lithosphere generally our earth system terrestrial system hydrosphere is a aquatic system atmosphere air and related organism and then the biosphere and as you know biosphere is surrounded by ecological envelope of lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere so biosphere is a core whatever we are doing i think only uh, for the biosphere flora fauna human being living organism non living organism and cryosphere the another very important term is relating to ice and particularly when we talk about indian environment this cryosphere is a very very important it is also a very distinct portion of the hydrosphere as well as the pedosphere particularly corresponding to the soil pedology these all are intermixed sphere now i would like to bring before you the very important concept of ecosystem because you know somebody define ecology is the study of ecosystem so very broadly simple definition you know if you have to say you can say it is a widely perceived that ecology is a study of ecosystem now what is ecosystem an ecosystem is a natural unit consisting of all plants animals microorganisms biotic factors in an area functioning together with all the non living physical abiotic factor of environment so in not cell what i can say in simple way i can say ecosystem is a interaction between synthesis of interaction between biotic and abiotic factors of environment complete ecological unit that function as natural system 
with minimum human intervention. You know ecosystem also can be seen in a various hierarchical level. Whole Himalaya may be considered as an ecosystem and a small lake also may be considered as an ecosystem. I would like to elaborate this concept very and, and one two very important name I would like to bring before you because as a student of environmental study we should know. Particularly this term was coined by A. G. Tansley in 1935, which meant the integration of all living and non-living entities of the environment in a given space time unit. So, we have a space, we have a time, we have a, a, a living or non-living entity, these are the very important components of, but component of ecosystem. But it is very important to understand the definition by very classic definition by E. P. Odom in his famous book Fundamentals of Ecology, one of the founders of the science of ecology stated I quote any unit that includes all of the organisms that is the community in a given area interacting with physical environment so that a flow of energy leads to clearly defined trophic structure, biotic diversity and material cycles within the system is an ecosystem." Unquote. So, you can understand from this definition, it is a unit where includes the all different kind of organism, physical environment, flow of energy is there, trophic structure is there, biotic diversity is there, material cycle is there and so these all form the ecosystem. I would like to bring before you here the same in a more simple way, important interaction between biotic and abiotic component. Ecosystem, so you can see the physical abiotic environment where you can see the land, water, air, these are the biotic community although you know we have also the biosphere within soil within air also we have the biosphere and then we have the biotic community, flora, fauna, human being, living or non-living uh, organism in simple way you can say and the close interaction forming the ecosystem. Then we have the hierarchical concept of the ecosystem particularly the scale dimension varying from a small scale to the thousand of kilometers and so that is why you see like a Nainital, Naini lake, a small and then the whole Himalaya is a micro system and the micro level if you will come, so it may be Nainital, you know a Nainital, Naini lake. So, in ecosystem we have again I would like to bring before you the two very important component terrestrial and aquatic. Terrestrial like a mountain, desert, grasslands, we all have this in India. Aquatic system, marine long coastal line we have in India, fresh water ecosystem, even the ground water. Now, typology of ecosystem, 
how we can elaborate little bit this. First I would like to take the aquatic ecosystem. We can divide into the two category marine and the fresh water. Again marine like a ocean and estuary and the sea coast and fresh water pond, lake, then a spring, river, these are the three. If you go to the terrestrial ecosystem, we can divide the human system and the natural system. Particularly human system, grassland, cropland, garden and the natural system, tundra, forested area, desert, is all and then we have also the intermixed like a semi arid region where we have the uh, mixture of the little bit humidity and also to dryness. Now I would like to bring before you the very important concept of a space and time and through this diagram you will be able to understand that you can see macro level biome, major biomes we have all over the world and you can see this time, time we will have the year and then thousand to kilometer area then you will come to the more meso level forest where we have kilometer also and then we need to monitor monthly basis. So, biome is a more you know yearly long time series analysis, but but when we come to the micro level and when I talk micro means crop level, leaf level, then you see we have to measure on daily basis changes in the leaf pattern, changes in the crop. You see the from uh, planting the crop to the harvesting, we have different type of changes day wide changes and we have a very very small level analysis you know in the within meter we can analyze. So, this is the space time concept in ecosystem. Functioning of ecosystem, functioning of the ecosystem you can see we have input, we have output. What are the input? Input may be photosynthesis, precipitation, output may be uh, again precipitation, gases, the heat through decomposers and then we have the producers like a tree you know then we have the consumers like a different animals including the primary consumers and the secondary consumers and then the decomposers uh, uh, the insects warm and you can see a cycle you know how the functioning interaction between different organism within a ecosystem. But sunlight is a common, is a input and also the output as a heat and we get. In this process also I would like to bring before you here the
the the micro phenomena and the micro phenomena and as a, a student of environmental study we have to uh, down scaling the micro phenomena and up scaling the micro phenomena. So, up scaling and down scaling another very important concept I would like to bring before you particularly when we are dealing with the climate change or, or environmental change because we have to down scale the macro level phenomena and up scale the micro level phenomena. Here I would like to bring before you different type of the driving factors of an ecosystem. You know ecosystem is a state of condition. What are the driving factors? Climate, climate is a driving factor and if we have a change in the climate our ecosystem also influenced by this. Biogeochemical cycles we will see further also the analyze the different type of the cycle is a nutrient cycle. It includes the water cycle changes of water from one farm to another farm this whole is known as hydrological cycle and then we have land use and when I am telling the land use it includes the land cover also not only human use but also the uh, natural like a forest like a water and the land use like a settlements agriculture and these all are the important drivers and then what are the affected factors our life cycle is being influenced our nutrient cycle is being influenced our hydrological cycle is influenced and so human being as a part of ecosystem is also being influenced by impact coming through climate change land use and biogeochemical cycle. So, that is why it is called it is a not a physical chemical and biological processes, but the human responses food chain food waves they are representative of the predator prey relationship between a species within a system within a ecosystem within a habitat food chain has a basic mode of autotrophs organism able to manufacture their own food plants sunlight in nearly all food chain solar energy is a very very important input as you have seen. Then we have ecological pyramid because starting from primary producer to primary consumer secondary consumers tertiary consumers you know pyramid of biomass pyramid of productivity pyramid of numbers and role of plant in ecosystem is very very important particularly as a productive system and protective system productive system like a food fuel fodder shelter and protective system like soil binders wind break shelter blade and so that is why we should understand relationship between a space and environment and here the mapping comes a study the characteristics of a space and place location and place in broader context how people interact with the physical and human environment identify analyze the global pattern of objects and event that shape our life. So, mapping matter in geography not only in geography, but environmental study is a tool of geography, but helps in environmental inquiry. It supplements the theoretical part of the study. It represents the nature of geographical data. Data is generate, generated through different unit. It may be administrative or it may be the water unit and these data when depicted on maps show density pattern, dispersion distribution of phenomena and consideration and so that is why this is very very important environmental mapping 
because we can raise different type of question about physical and cultural attributes where it is, what is it like, why it is there, how did happen something, if suppose air pollution is how did it happen, what impact does it have, how should it be managed for the mutual benefit on humanity and natural environment. So, that is why through this type of question we can solve the global, regional, national and local ecological situation and problem. Thank you. Thank you sir. Thank you so very much for giving us this session. Friends, you are requested to be with us as we are back after a short break. Thank you. Friends, welcome back to this session. Friends, as you know that today we are talking on uh, concepts and approaches of uh, environmental studies and for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Professor R.B. Singh. Professor R.B. Singh is a, a renowned academician, uh, a scholar through which uh, we always get in-depth knowledge on various topics and issues uh, of uh, geography. Friends, uh, uh, if you wish to ask questions from Professor R.B. Singh on today's topic, then do call us through our toll-free number. Our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. I repeat, our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. You are just requested to call in the last ten minutes of the lecture. Now, I would like to welcome our guest, Professor R. B. Singh, once again. Hello, sir. Welcome Thank to the you, session. Thank you, Welcome, viewers. We are discussing environmental studies, particularly the conceptual uh, <coughs> and approaches, concept and approaches. Environmental study is a synthesis of educating social economic, institutional and ecological system that are in place to develop and manage environmental resources, ecosystem resources and the delivery of environmental services for present and future generation. Particularly, I would like to quote two very important statements former Director General of IUCN, Lee M. Talbot. First, I quote, human beings in their quest for economic development and improvement their condition of life must come to terms with realities of resource limitations and carrying capacity of ecosystem and must also take account of needs of future generation. So, dear colleague, sustainability concept deals the future generation, but the ex director general of International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources highlighted in this very excellent way that human beings, we all for our quest for economic development, for efforts, for improving our uh, life cycle, lifestyle and so that is why we are now coming into limitation of 
carrying capacity of ecosystem because population growing demand increasing and we have limited resources. MF is strong again very important environmentalist uh, he was executive director of United Nations environment program. I would like to quote few lines from he, his statement. I quote in Asia, Africa and Latin America the disposition was regard to regard the environment as something remote from the interest and concern of the poor. So, poor in suppose in the in, uh, interior tribal area they are more closer to environment. So, the disposition was to regard the environment as a something remote from the interest and concern of the poor. To a man faced with immediate starvation and other diseases of poverty, the person who is facing the starvation and immediate other diseases of poverty, the risk he runs from contamination of the siege or the atmosphere seems so remote as to be irrelevant for them, those who are depending on daily earn and eat, for them contamination of the sea, nothing, it does not matter. To him, factory smoke smells of money, money coming from the smells of a smoke from the factory and jobs and needed consumer goods. They need consumer goods from, they need job, unquote. And so that is why I would like to say that we have several adopt the several approaches of environmental study since long. first landscape structure. Landscape is a synthesis of physical uh, uh, structure processes and stages. Landscape includes the uh, structural elements and potential. Landscape potential is De depending on the landscape structure. We have to understand the language of landscape, language of landscape realities. It may be the physical landscape or it may be the human landscape or it may be combination of both. So, landscape study has a long history in environmental studies and the earlier period when our population you know density was very less, all were considered the natural landscape. Then the second concept came the ecosystem structure and as you know the ecosystem it includes the processes, linkages, flow of energy, information and feedback system within a ecosystem, a combination of biotic and abiotic components may be process, link, linkages may be developed, flow of energy, energy transfer between one organism to another organism. And so, ecosystem like a Himalayan ecosystem, desert ecosystem, city ecosystem, 
it has some hierarchical homogeneous unit within a ecosystem you can find homogeneity you can find the interactive interactive system and one ecosystem is different from the another ecosystem so that is why sometime it comes the concept of hierarchy environmental perception and behavior is a more recent you know particularly ecosystem concept given by tansley odom and all different people environmental perception you know burton cake and burton gilbert fight robert cake did contribute substantially particularly dealing with the perceived environment adaptation process how the people adopt how the people cope whereby an organism fits better into its environment and way of life flood is a hazard disaster the perception may deep may differ according to people uh, habitat rural people they perceive flood in a different way than the urban people rich person people having a owning land they can perceive the flood in a different way than a poor people who are depending on daily earn and eat and so that is why we should try to understand the human environment ecosystem interrelationship natural human largely people were satisfying basic needs like other components of ecosystem that time harmonious relationship with ecosystem so you know early part of the human civilization everywhere we we were largely the natural man a natural hu human but at present also you can go to the interior tribal area you can find the some very harmonious relationship with the nature many community social community they practice very harmonious relationship with the nature social human this concept when human adopted human being as a labor activity and marx you know told this through labor activity particularly in the primary sector more dependent on society institution law and policy but some divorce between human and nature is started during this period but you can find also the social human also were more better than technological man Te technological man they are not depending on the ecosystem not on the environment through technology they are reducing the dependence on the ecosystem more resource utilization for economic gain and exchange between one ecosystem to another changes in character of the ecosystem 
and so in war concept of environmental degradation came more during when human being started playing a role of technological man. Our population density is high, demand is increasing, we are encroaching more and more on natural environment at present. But same natural human, social human, technological human, you can find this at present also. Extreme tribal area in many part of India you can find the natural human. Social human where the moderate level of development where only agricultural activity and the, our mega city, city ecosystem is a more where you can see the role of technological human. Biogeochemical cycle particularly this is a very very important or nutrient cycle. It is a pathway by which a chemical element or molecule moves from biotic to abiotic environment. Element is recycled although in some cycle there may be a place called reservoir where the element is accumulated or held for a long period of time. Most well known cycle and important biological cycle including water cycle, carbon cycle, nutrient cycle, oxygen cycle, phosphorus cycle, surface cycle. I would like to take 2, 3 cycle for example. You see the water cycle. You see the we have the rainfall, precipitation and precipitation directly on sea or the uh, on the stream, then we have on the ground also through a snow melt runoff coming you know to do the infiltration and ground water discharge and ground water uh, storage also going to the sea through a, uh, a spring fresh water storage, then we have surface runoff. And then we have evaporation from the water, evapotranspiration through the different uh, forest and the biotic. And then we have the condensation and then again cloud formation and the of suppose if we are entering into the hydrological cycle. Suppose I am giving you one example. We have runoff. How we can influence the runoff? Suppose the construction activity, the pakka roads can check the flow of water, check the infiltration process, seepage process. So, in this way how human beings are entering into the ecos uh, this water cycle. Deforestation can change the evapotranspiration pattern and then we can have the change in the water cycle. Same way nitrogen cycle, nitrogen cycle you see we have the plants, nitrogen fixing bacteria is there, artificially also we uh, put nitrate particularly for increasing the productivity. So, we are bringing also the artificial entering into this our soil organism through the uh, putting the bacteria uh, uh, nitrate and you see not, not only in the uh, soil, but also in the water we have a high nitrate concentration these days on ground water. These are not able to drink, we are not able to eat. The plant any deforestation also can change through the uh, uh, other uh, you know decomposition uh, composers also we can influence. 
Then we have carbon cycle, this is a very very important as you know when we are di discussing the carbon uh, climate change, this cycle is a very very important and ocean is considered as a sink and source of the carbon. We have a vast deposit, then we have the artificial also the carbon through this vehiculars, through vegetation, deforestation, through the carbon sequestration, uh, fossil fuel you know uh, combustion, cement production, these are also you know soil carbon also through various process also uh, we uh, re release and the carbon what is the most important development in our ecosystem or environment. You see post industrial period we have a rapid growth of CO2 emission. And so, we are getting even the micro level you see the a small vehicular. So, this is a very small pattern, but it can influence our whole global cycle. Mega city is, is a small place micro level, but it can influence the whole global uh, carbon cycle. So, we have to regulate our activity so that these cycles should not be disturbed. I would like to bring before you the another important concept carrying capacity as a measurement of ecosystem sustainability. It is a biological species in the environment like a population size of the species that the environment can sustain. So, human be being the number of population, the size of population a particular piece of land or the forest can support. So, if you will ask me to identify the important measurement of sustainability, I can say carrying capacity measurement is a very important measurement of sustainability. It is possible for a species to exceed its carrying capacity temporarily. Another important concept I would like to bring before you ecological footprint. It comprises human demand with planet earth, ecological capacity to regenerate, ecological footprint concept not so far you know studied more in developing country, country like India we should deal you know ISA International Institute of Applied System Analysis they did some work few scholars Reese and other his student also these two people work on this ecological footprint means the how many foot foot means the leg you know this how many people can be supported by not only in the production, but we have to take into account the consumption, the trade. So, in area total production, consumption and the trade, sometimes data you know it very difficult to get the data. So, that is why this concept has not become popular but I think it is necessary to explore this concept also. In 2006 humanity total ecological print footprint was estimated at 1.4 planet earth. In other words humanity uses ecological services one four time as fast as earth can generate them. So, you can see that the what is the situation of footprint. Through the, this uh, map you can understand that where we have the more better ecological footprint. You see the USA because population less and more resources, Canada, uh, Australia, 
Russia, but when you come to the uh, other country like uh, you see some part of Africa, uh, South Asia, our ecological footprint because of the very high concentration of population. So, that is why the population continues to be the very, very important challenge and deep, uh, population demographic dividend nothing, not, not able, we are not able to get actually because of the very high concentration of population and you see the country wise ecological footprint uh, in the world. And so, we have to understand the vicious circle of environment, population influence poverty and then poverty influence environmental and interactive system. In environmental degradation also influence population and then population uh, uh, being converted into the poverty, you know. So, it is a interactive system. Environment and poverty major, you know, a causal factor of environmental degradation is a perpetuating poverty, particularly among rural poor. Because of the high pressure of population, we have impact on soil fertility, quality, quantity of water, air qualities, forest, wildlife, fisheries. The poor are also more vulnerable to loss of resilience in the ecosystem. It is clear that poor environmental quality has adversely affected our human health also. And so, that is why the concept of ecology and development, conservation and development must go hand in hand. Develop world earlier, you know, concept was that development for uh, 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 ecology for develop world and development for developing world, but this is no longer true. In develop, we have very complex nature of, you know, situation. In developed world, they are facing the problem of due to the impact of development, but in developing country like India, we have, we are getting the cumulative effect of not only impact of development, but also lack of development. Develop world, development high uh, a standard of living, developing world, lack of. So, it is not, we cannot say that the in developed country only the ecology should be taught or ecology should be or environmental management should be considered. Developing country all now becoming, you know, developing uh, and in quest of economic development, we are be approaching lot of impact on environment. And so, this see, you can see this the, through this diagram environment and development relationship, where human beings environment is there and then we, we are going for the quest of economic development. And in this process, we need equity in unit uh, 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 management. And so, that is why the concept of sustainable development came into existence development that meets the needs of present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their needs. And here I would like to also mention the sustainable consumption is a very, very important what Gandhi ji also said earth provides enough to satisfy the every man's need, but not every man's greed. So, we can say that there is enough for the need of the every nation, but not enough for the grief of niche nation. So, efficient consumption is a very, very important in this context energy audit, waste management is a very, very important. We have to reduce the direct, direct environmental burden, maximize opportunity, lifestyles and one concept important I would like to mention eco development eco development as a subset of development, a path of development designed to help people define their real goals for growth and to utilize their own available natural resources and human skills with pattern of growth that are sustainable. Protection of resource use, regeneration of resources, productive and local level participation. So, holistic concept of eco development 
may be socially desirable, economically viable, culturally authentic, technologically uh, uh, important and such a very important uh, scholar. He brought concept of need, satisfaction of basic need, self-reliance and then the environmental competi compatibility. Then we can move and towards the healthy environment responsibility of a state and people is a very very important and the finally I would like to conclude that situation of environment is complex in India, sustainable consumption and livelihood should go to first priority and for that we have to see the multidimensional attributes like awareness, participation, integration, value and attitude, skills, evaluation, knowledge, stewardship, these all uh, can be a very, very important part of environmental studies and development should be implemented, but not at the cost of ecology or environment. Thank you. With this note, thank you sir. Thank you so very much. Dear friends, we are going to meet again very soon. Till then, keep watching us. Thank you.